Good evening and welcome everybody to our sixth in the series of our online events that draw upon our alumni and some industry contacts to celebrate the ever increasing inclusivity and of course success of our students in the real estate sector. My name is Sarah Cardwell, I'm the postgraduate course leader for one of our real estate courses, which is the um, MSc. I also teach across our undergraduate provision and I hold the role of the Athena Swan Champion for our Natural and Built Environment Department. So just a little bit about the Athena Swan Charter, if you're not aware of it. It's a framework that's used across the globe. It supports and transforms gender equality within the higher education sector, including research, and it also encourages the career development of women in employment. So as a department, we currently hold the Bronze Award. This recognizes our commitment to equality um, across both our staff and our students. Our industry professional body, the RICS, also has responsibility to tackle barriers to entry and encourage a more diverse profession. In 2015, the RICS launched the Inclusive Employer Quality Mark as a response to the sector being behind other professions in moving towards a more diverse and inclusive work um, space. However, um, just to pick up on a few statistics, um, women hold only 17% of the RICS professional um, sector globally, so there's still a long way to go. A few years ago, the RICS set its own target to increase the proportion of women entering the profession to 26%. About half of the RICS executive team and 40% of the senior leadership team are now women and their gender pay gap is closing year on year. In fact, this year, the RICS began recognizing efforts to advance diversity and inclusion within the framework of the characteristics to become a fellow. So here at Sheffield Hallam, we're pleased to be playing our part. Louise Brooks Smith was the first female RICS president who was a graduate of our course. Our real estate students won the Association of Women in Properties National Student Award in 2016 and 2018. And this year we're celebrating almost achieving a 50% female intake onto our course. So today we have the pleasure of hearing from three former Sheffield Hallam students about their own career path into real estate, as well as Emma Snip, confidence and resilience coach, who will be talking to us about her own career journey mentoring and empowering women in commercial property, property law and construction. So after our four talks, we will have a Q&A session to address all the speakers. So if you can save any questions until the end of the presentations, or if you want to put those into the chat as we go along, I will pick those up at the end. We'll also have a chance for a 30 minute breakout session. So you have an opportunity to chat to our speakers informally. So a little bit of information if you do want to get hold of any of the course leaders across the real estate provision. We have our undergraduate BSc real estate course where we have Luke Bennett as our course leader. Our previous joint course leader, Karen Gibson, now um, runs the degree apprenticeship for professional practice in real estate. And then myself, um, as I mentioned, as the course leader for our postgraduate MSc real estate provision. We also have a YouTube channel, which you can see on the screen here. As I said at the start, this is the sixth in the series of um, a program of online events. So if you do want to watch any of our previous events online, they have been recorded and they are available on this channel. And just to say that this is also being recording and will be available after the event. So I hand over now to our first speaker, um, who is Emma Snip, to introduce herself and tell you a bit about what she does. Hello everyone, thanks so much Sarah. So first of all, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's a privilege to be here. Um, I didn't go to Sheffield, I did my uh, masters in Kingston. So I, I feel like I'm kind of like sneaking in here a little bit. So thank you so much for, for welcoming me in. So um, hello, I'm Emma, I'm a confidence and resilience coach. Um, I specialize in empowering women from um, real estate construction, property law, all things property. Um, I still hold my MRICs. And I'm also a Lionheart ambassador. Um, so prior to becoming a full-time coach, I worked at the Crown Estate. Um, I was an asset manager there. 
uh, and I worked in our regional portfolio. So we had, I think it was like 4.7 billion portfolio. And at the Crown Estate, regional just meant anything that wasn't St. James's or Regent Street. So they were like, they were the big guys. They were the kings and queens. They spawned around. They had they had the good stuff. They had Burberry and all that. And then there was me. And I had, you know, boats and super truck and all the, all the cool stuff. Um, but outside of that, I also worked on the heritage portfolio, which was very cool. And that basically meant anything that had any sort of reputational impact, but made no money whatsoever. And I had on there everything from stables right through to like Elton Palace, which was excellent. I managed to go and do um, an inspection there with my mum and got her a private tour of Elton Palace. So that was a, a career highlight. But um, my route into asset management and property in general was in no way traditional. So I started out on a reception desk in the city of London at Calendar Life. And the story behind that was I was going to be uh, an English teacher. So I did an undergrad in English literature, always helpful in property. And um, I managed about two weeks. And that's mostly because you cannot be a teacher in a school in South East London with a name like Snip ain't gonna happen so um that's how I started out I started out on the reception desk and um I remember I, I got really into it uh, I was really enjoying paying attention to all the property stuff and getting involved and I was kind of you know just going along to events and just basically sticking my two pennies worth in and uh, the head of property pulled me into his office one day and he said to me um uh, everyone called me Snippy but he was like so Snippy you seem like a you love your job. You really enjoy your job. You seem really good at it. You, you know, you're really into this, aren't you? And I realised it was an absolute make or break moment. So I, I took a deep breath and I got the confidence up, and say, confidence up to say, no, not really. I love it here. I love everything you do. I love everything that's going on. I'd like to know more. I'd like to get off of the reception desk. And that was the start of my journey. That was the start of my journey. So from there, they put me through uh, the master's degree. I did my APC. I started off doing uh, administration. I went into sustainability. Uh, I did all things uh, environmental and we didn't really have much to do with sustainability at the time, which meant that I got involved in everything. I got some bread. I did all of the uh, BRIAM. I did everything. It was great. Um, I did my master's in um uh, sustainability and planning that had a, a RICS accreditation uh, and, and went from there really. But I think um, the main thing that was useful for me is coming up through an alternative route. So I did have a grad scheme just to go back one. I was the first person in our office that did the APC. And what it made me realise is I understood the holistic approach of property and I understood all the many layers and the importance of everyone involved because you tend to meet people on the grad schemes and they go in and they do a bit of this and do a bit of that and they go through and they come out the other side and they don't necessarily realize how difficult it is if you come through an alternative route so I hear that 17 percent of uh, women in RICS right now that's much better than when I started when I started it was 13 and I was uh, a working class girl from Dartford South East London in an office where everybody else was um, a privately educated middle class man. I had uh, one director tell me that I would never get anywhere in property because I was too common. I had regular discrimination sexually. I even had one agent assault me. It was really, really, really hard. Um, and, it, and it really taught me with a passion the importance of uh, diversity and inclusion and covering for everybody. So anyway, I got through Canada Life and I and I loved it there, went really well and I had this opportunity to go for a job interview at the Crown Estate. And I'd been in asset management for a year. I think I'd been qualified for a year and a half, something like that. I was like, I'm, I don't want to work for, I don't want to work for uh, Crown Estate, far too stuffy. I'm not interested in that. But I'll go along anyway and I'll see what it's like to get a little bit of experience. So go along to the uh, to the interview. And they absolutely sell it to me, right? They're forward thinking, they're into prop tech, they're into sustainability, they're into community aspects. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And because I'd gone in there, uh, completely assuming that I would have no chance in hell or high water of getting this job, I was completely cool. 
I was completely chilled. It was all fine. I just went for a chat. Next thing you know, offering me a job. Couldn't believe it. So I get in there. And uh, as soon as I'm in there, I'm getting involved in all things people. Uh, I'm a wellbeing champion, wellbeing delivery driver, mental health first aider, getting involved in the diversity inclusion team, all of that stuff. And uh, it was at that point that I realised that actually what I care about most in property, more than property itself, is the people. The people are everything. Your community that you guys are building up here, everybody you know now, those people are going to stay in your lives for your whole career. People is everything. So that's when I realised that I needed to train up in something more people and I became a coach. Um, but I think, you know, if I was going to boil down my career so far and my coaching and everything to give you three key tips to make sure that your career is, is big for you. It's first of all, be authentic. So when I started, literally hardly ever met any women, definitely didn't meet anyone from working class, definitely didn't meet anyone as gobby as me, right? But if you're authentic, people are attracted to you, right? People work with people. People are attracted to you. There's lots of people in property. It's quite incestuous. You all get to know each other and you get to know everyone's names. And if you are yourself, people enjoy being around you. The second one is know you are always leading, always leading. If you're doing everything to the best of your ability and you're being open and genuine, there are people who are nervous and shy, who don't know how to deal with things, watching you, paying attention, and they are being inspired by you. You have no idea whose lives you're touching, how much you're inspiring them as you go. So just keep going. You're doing the best you can. It's perfect. And the third one is always be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to shout. Vulnerability is not a weakness. It's a strength. You know, we all have to build confidence. I have clients that are heads of property. And they sit in front of me in tears saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm waiting to be caught out. Right. And if they could just be open with their colleagues and say, I'm struggling today, they'd be all right. OK, so those are my three tips. Be authentic. Know you're always leading and have the strength to be vulnerable. And I just want to wish you all the best of luck with your studies and your careers and everything ahead of you. And thank you again for welcoming me to this space. Thanks, Emma. Um, so we'll now move on to um, a, a former Sheffield student, Georgia. Um, I just say I'm a fascinating route into real estate. Some really great tips there. I was listening, trying to think, well, I'm going to note down my favourite one and comment on that. Uh, but I loved all three. Um, so um, over to Georgia, please. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and thanks for, for having me, guys. It's, um, it's, quite, it's nice to be here. Uh, Nice to be back. It's been, it's been a little while, though it feels like yesterday. So um, I'm just going to chat through kind of how I've got to, to where I am now and, and how I started out on the on the real estate degree. So I did my A-levels in 2011. Um, safe to say they didn't go to plan at all. Um, and my, my original plan was to go and study politics. Um, and the, the grades didn't happen for me. So I thought, Right, next next plan. Um, first year of, of big university fees, 2012. So kind of half thinking about you know, getting something at the end of it that's, that's going to enable me to pay back this big bill. Um, so I thought, well, property um, kind of ties in with the A-levels that I'm doing. Um, it, it seems interesting. Um, I've not got the, not got the grades to, to get onto the real estate degree at Hallam, but I will go for the built environment degree with a, a view to transferring after a year. Um, and this, this memory kind of sticks in my head, probably the clearest memory um, from Hallam is standing on outside Howard Building at the, the clearing open day. Um, and I bumped into to Tony Cheatham, who, who, who's here today. And uh, I was, uh, I, well, essentially pitched myself to him and said, look, this is, this is my plan. My, my A-levels didn't go to plan. I want to get into to real estate and I'll do the built environment degree for a year and then I want to transfer. And then Tony said, well, all sounds good. Why don't you uh, start on the real estate degree off the bat? And it was about then that I realised perhaps a career in agency uh, was, was probably the one for me. So um, anyway, we, we, I'd started on the, the real estate degree, 
September 2012, um, doing the, the four year course, which included a three, uh, placement year in the third year, which I um, and Eleanor did, did a similar thing and she'll tell you about it. We, uh, we both worked at Lambert Smithampton in, in our placement years. Um, which was really great experience so uh, that was in in Leeds for me and then back to to Hallam for um, final year before moving down to London to to join the the graduate scheme at, at Lambert Smithampton for for a year before sitting APC. Um, uh, the, the real estate degree at Hallam and it's it's coming at this from quite a London centric focus gives you such an advantage um, over perhaps the other universities and not only because of the quality of the teaching but also the the, the placement year is, is such a, a good insight and the work ethic that you learn on that year and the putting into practice all the things that you've learned on the two years previously really gives you a good stepping stone for um, the final year and also for um, grad scheme and an APC if that's what you choose to do so I would really encourage firstly everybody to to do that that placement year if they can do um it was really beneficial for me um so I did my APC and um moved from Lambert Smithampton to to Colliers six months after after qualifying which was just because I wanted to, I knew I wanted to get into the industrial and logistics sector and it was the right opportunity at the right time. So it was, uh, it was a good move. Um, and that actually came about through some contacts and, and friends that I'd made whilst on my placement year in Leeds. So as Emma says, it, it is very incestuous. You do get to know everybody. Um, there's not a huge amount of surveyors. And, you know, if you can, you know, be yourself and you know apply yourself the opportunities will will present themselves to you at the kind of opportune moment which is what happened to me and that was three and a half years ago um and i've i've uh, been in the industrial team ever since focusing on all aspects of industrial and logistics property so that's advising occupiers advising landlords advising developers um to give you a snapshot, I've just uh, acted for Microsoft on their, um, a new research and development facility for them in Cambridge, which was a really fascinating project. You know, we, we do um, big transactions for uh, the what we call third party logistics providers. So the people that you will know, so DHL, DPD, Amazon, those sorts of people. And then we also advise developers on bringing strategic land through the, the planning system, um, allocating for employment use and, and developing out big logistics schemes, which hopefully touch wood means we all get our deliveries on time for Christmas. So it's um, all part of the life cycle of, of property, which is, is really fascinating. Um, and the, what I like about agency is the variety of projects that you can get involved with and it's cliche and everybody says it but no day is is the same as as the last one so and that that to me is uh, is quite important and kind of keeps me motivated um i think in terms of things that i wish i'd been told career-wise a lot of these are going to echo what emma said um but first and foremost don't be afraid to be yourself uh stand out be a little bit different you know this there's a danger with this industry particularly with the big corporate grad schemes that you, it can feel a little bit like a sausage factory um and you can look around and go god everybody's the same and you know i don't i don't feel like how everybody else seems to look um don't worry about that too much and what emma said is absolutely true you know if you can be yourself people people know when people are being themselves and they like it so they'll gravitate towards you and it will stand you in really good stead um and you know it, it doesn't matter you know there's there's a there's a a conception here that a, we've got quite a a lot of superior seniors in in terms of the age profile of the of the surveying sector but you know just because you're young just because you're a bit different doesn't mean you you've not got a, a valuable contribution to make so just really be yourself um 
and you know it will you'll reap the rewards secondly i would say don't be afraid to push on doors it sometimes can feel like you you need to to keep pushing and push push more than once don't take no for an answer if you've got something to say do what you can to make sure you're heard and that can be at times difficult particularly as a female in this in this sector so there's 35 um fianas in my team and i'm the uh, the only girl and at times that can present challenges um but also i think you know once once you get yourself heard you will find that people come to you for your opinion because your opinion is always going to be a bit different to the echo chamber that you can find yourself in so get yourself heard and you'll you'll rock it up the priority list and then people will constantly want to hear what you've got to say um thirdly it can feel very serious and very stuffy at times try and remember that that you this is going to be a long career you know we're not retiring anytime soon so try and have a bit of fun if you can make friends it makes the whole thing a lot more enjoyable if you can be mates with the people that you're doing business with um so i'd really recommend that you know just get involved in all the social stuff find people who are like-minded and stick with them um that will that will really help you um fourth this is very cringy um but don't stop learning i think asking questions is a really good standpoint to start from people love to talk about themselves so just ask loads of questions you'll learn so much from everybody um and that's that that's a skill that everyone should kind of take forward irrespective of where you are in your career really just continuing to learn is uh, is is something that you you should do and finally from me i think try and pay it forward if you can get involved with whether it's grads helping out with with apc you know it wasn't that long ago that we we were there and we needed help so make sure you help out make sure you get involved with kind of diversity initiatives um, and really, you know, help out the younger generations, but also, you know, we've all, it, it's very well, well publicised the, the challenges that surveying and property in general faces in terms of diversity and inclusion. Um, and we all have a part to play in making sure that we break the cycle and that we reach people from different backgrounds whatever that may be you know there's a, there's a focus on on gender here but you know i think from from um disadvantaged backgrounds we, you know we need to we need to recruit from um different ethnicities it's there's a lot of work to do and i think if you're that way inclined get on board whatever your organization is whether they they're they're advanced in their dni policy or whether they're just starting out get on board and push it it's um it's worthwhile for you but it's also it's, it's worthwhile for the sector as well so um i've been involved in the balancing business initiative at colliers for um two years now and uh we're you know hold our hands up we've got we've got work to do and you know but we are also making um great strides in in that regard as well so it's uh, it's really rewarding to be a part of um so yeah sorry a few rambled on there a few few tips from me but um hopefully that gives you some some insight into how to um how to carve a, a decent path for yourself in in this sector thanks georgia um great to hear you doing so well uh 2012 seems not that long ago actually since you no, started just... um at shoe uh and the great sector to be in industrial it wasn't quite the same when i came out of doing my msc qualification 2004 um and i love the push on doors one in terms of advice i heard quite a depressing statistic a few years ago about um how high the rate was for females in terms of not applying for promotions in the first place because of fear of not back uh, so great piece of advice um so on the screen as you can see, we've now got a recording. Another former Sheffield Hallam student, Janita, who can't join us this evening, but has kindly put together a recording, which we'll show you now. Hi, my name is Janita Toombs. I'm a Chartered Commercial Property Surveyor and a former Sheffield Hallam student. Apologies, I'm unable to interact with you all today. However, I am glad of the opportunity to still share my um, journey within my profession so far. 
when I decided I wanted to go to university, I was considered a mature student. I'd been away from my education for a number of years, and so the requirement was for me to um, complete an access to learning course. Um, I did that, and then I gained credits to enrol onto the H and D in the estate agency. I did the H and D first, and then progressed onto the second year of the real estate degree. I thoroughly enjoyed the course. However, um, approaching the end of the third year, at that time I had two children, um, I had responsibilities where I couldn't just get up and go and move away. Um, so I got a feeling of that I wouldn't fit into the profession. So I approached one of my lecturers who was the head of the course at the time and he gave me options. One of them was um, to work for a public body. So he gave me some contacts, I approached the Sheffield City Council and I gained some work experience within their property services team. Within the first few days of that experience, I honestly used around 80 to 85% of the course content. I was able to engage in conversations, uh, I was able to make a judgement on what form of valuation to use um, when discussing a property. Um, and it just gave me the push to keep going and that it was an option for somebody like me. After uni I secured a graduate position so within property services where I'd done my work experience before. My post was in the acquisitions and disposals team. So in our team we deliver an accelerated client acquisition and disposal program. This can involve the inspection, valuation, marketing um, and appraisal of land and property. I love the fact that the job is a, a real opportunity to mix desk work and out being out on site. You have to gather information and piece information together to gain a, an understanding of the task at hand. So I like people and property and this is a real mix of the two. Um, you get to meet people, whether it's clients, developers, tenants, investors or members of the public. A real plus of a qualification in surveying is the fact that this qualification can take you anywhere in the world. In general, it provides a variety of opportunities and once you've got that qualification, you can then progress further and work further into a specific role if you wish. There is no such thing as an av average day. Every day is different. One day you can go into work, do some research, write a report, um, and another day I could be driving out into the countryside, measuring some farm buildings. There are challenges within the profession. Um, there aren't enough surveyors around. I believe that's because typically it's a lot of companies didn't really want, want to spend the money to assist students through their APC, they just wanted someone who could hit the ground running, so they wanted someone who was chartered already. And what's happened there is that it's created a gap within the ind industry. There is a significant amount of up and coming surveyors, however, it's not bridging the gaps. The good thing is there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of demand for surveyors, so it really helps when you're negotiating employment terms. When I was at school, when we had careers days and things like that, the surveying wasn't a route that was ever encouraged. Females are underrepresented within the profession. Within my team, it's around a 50-50 split of male and female. My manager's female, um, the head of the service, and the head of the council overall is a female. So for me, it's quite exciting that there are clear examples of women in high positions working for a public body there are clear guidelines there is regular training that are mandatory to be educated on how to treat people fairly obviously people do have their own views but how i approach something like that is I will continue to strive to be the best person for the job. Regardless of anyone's personal views, it ultimately boils down to one thing. For the client, 
Can you deliver what they want? Can you provide the information that they need? If you're good at what you do, the gender bias and any other racial bias, anything like that just seems to fall away. I will never change who I am. I can't change my colour. Um, I will continue to progress and be successful. My background, my experiences, be them positive or negative, have all contributed to getting me to where I am today. Um, and I own them. I'm proud of them. Always take the opportunity to network. Somebody that you speak to at an event could potentially be someone who would offer you a placement or a graduate scheme. Someone that you've spoken to before may have information on a particular type of building that you have to value or they've had some involvement in that site before and they may be able to share some information that's, which is crucial to your valuation or your findings. Keep updating your skills and just to make sure you are as competent as you can be. So if you demonstrate your skills, you get noticed. Um, you get put forward for interesting um, instructions, which all enhance your level of experience. I wish I was just aware of all the opportunities that this profession opens up for you. You can really tailor your career to suit what outcome that you want. Work experience is essential. The more experience you get, the better. Um, it will help you if you wish to do your APC. It will help you increase your employability. But that there was such a great network of fellow surveyors that are available for help and guidance, even when you are in a professional role, um, especially when you're studying or completing your APC. So thank you for listening. Um, feel free to contact me if there's anything else you'd like to discuss with me, if there's any advice or guidance that I might be able to assist you with. Thank you, take care. Okay, so I've heard from Janita there, really good to hear someone who's um, obviously overcome some personal challenges um, and has a public sector role. Um, clearly passionate about what she does too and interesting that she's also sharing those thoughts um on really important just to be who you are uh, and be yourself so last but not least helena we'll pass over to you um and then when Eleanor's finished we'll have a chance for our q a thanks sarah thanks everybody it's it's really good to be here like georgia um i graduated in 2016 so it's been a while um but as georgia said um we were both in the same year, so we ended up um, both on our placement years at Lambert Smith Hampton. Um, I'm just going to share my screen because I've managed to make mine look very corporate. Um, and do you know what? Doing my placement year is probably the best thing about the whole degree. Um, it was just invaluable experience. I got to sit in a team with um, my line manager, who was the only other person in the team. It was us two. We just got on with it. He then, that meant I was exposed to all of our clients. Um, he was really supportive, approachable. He'd always had a placement or a graduate in his team, so he knew exactly what, um, what, they, what the struggles would be um and just always had an example of how how you should approach something um probably one of the best people I work, I've ever worked with I think um he doesn't work at Lambert Smith Hampton anymore there's a tip for you <laughs> um so after I'd done my placement year he I he offered me a graduate job and I went back as a graduate with LSH so this is all in Manchester um that was lease advisory that I'd done on the placement year and then I moved to retail agency which was um a bit of an eye-opener um I did that for about five months and then I went into the valuation team where I sat until I did my APC um so I just put on the slide some of the clients that we did work for um one thing I tell everyone who 
comes and works with me at a more junior level is just don't be afraid to ask a question because I remember sitting there thinking oh no should I ask this should I ask this what are they going to think of me they're going to think I'm stupid and deliberating over something for probably far too long and then asking the question and just being fine and obviously you're going to have a question because you don't know do you you're there to learn um and so that's one of my biggest pieces of advice just don't don't be afraid and just don't get inside your own head because everyone's a human everyone has questions to ask and you're not going to know until you've learned it so um that was definitely one piece of advice from my earlier years and another thing um that I think it's really important especially now um you can probably see I'm sat at home but one of the best ways to learn is to just listen and at Lambert Southampton I was sat in lease advisory for my whole year in the placement year yet we were sat right next to all the agents I sat then the other side was valuation and I knew what was going on with their teams, even though I wasn't sat in their teams. And I knew what was going on with the Manchester office market because they were sat directly behind me. And so going back to uni to do my final year, I just had a wealth of knowledge under my belt. And, you know, if you don't get yourself involved in, in the office, then things like that won't happen. So you just have to listen and spend time with senior colleagues, I think um so moving on yeah I did my I passed my APC in autumn of 17 and I don't know how I'm going to get to the next slide now there we go um I knew that I really liked retail I'd kind of been able to do bits and bobs with retail um throughout those two or three years and I was really enjoying what I was doing evaluation. So I thought, well, oh, how am I gonna how am I gonna do both of this? So went to my line manager after I passed my APC and we were, you know, right, go on, what's the next thing? And um he said, Well, yeah, if you want to do retail vowels, then that can that will be your job. So I thought, oh no, I've got to how am I gonna get retail clients? How am I supposed to do this? And I thought this is going to be a really hard losing battle. I'm, I think I need to move. I think I need to move. I think I need to grow my platform. At this point, I was in Manchester, um, and I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to have to get to London because if I want to get into retail and I want to work with people that are on that slide, that doesn't happen from Manchester, unfortunately. Not not then. It does a bit now. I think um, I'm hoping that that will happen soon for me um but I had to um yeah I decided I was going to move down to London and I've ended up in the job which I'm in now which is a uh, retail valuation at Cushman Wakefield and I specialize in the valuation of designer outlets which is very niche and not what I thought I'd be doing when I started my degree in 2012 um so there's two consultancies really that specialize in this sector um and so that means that we, we get to work on the best designer outlets in the world really um if you name it we've probably touched it so it's really good um I, we also i also do quite a lot of work with retailers um, and we provide not just valuations for their portfolios so the likes of marks and spencers Benick, uh, John Lewis, Arcadia, Boots, you know, um, they are also coming to us and saying what we're going to do with our portfolios. The world of retail is just flipping on its head and how, what should we do? We don't want that much space anymore. Um, so it's really exciting and no, yeah, no, whenever you get repeat work, it's it never turns out to be the same. Um, so when I was considering taking the job at Cushman's, um, I'd heard quite a bit about them and I thought, oh yeah, 
big corporate don't really want in my head didn't really want to be getting in, you know getting into that but might be good they seem like they have quite relaxed policies that i know they just put in a casual dress code they had flexible working policies so with a move to london for me as well i thought that sounds quite quite an easy one so i'll try that um and it it's just like that the work that um i do with the designer outlets we it's across the whole of europe um because it's such a niche market investors look at the asset class on a continental basis so most of the um outlets that we do value are in europe and it's a shame that over the last 18 months I haven't been able to go to any um but on a normal week there might be a trip to prague in a day and then you have to sit back at the desk the next day but with flexible working policies means I can be back you know in an airport at midnight and then don't have to be in the office at 9am the next day which is good um one big thing that struck me when I moved to Cushman's from Manchester was how many females there were in the office when I got there on the first day and I looked around I thought wow this wasn't it wasn't like this in Manchester um, and I think we've now got about 50% of employees are female at Cushman's, which is really encouraging for someone uh, of my age in the industry, I think. Um, we've also got a really active Inspire um, committee, which covers the diversity and inclusion. And um, we always have talks from different uh, colleagues, whether they be of different ethnic background of LGBTQ+. Um, then we also have quite a lot of guest speakers that come in. We actually had Gareth Thomas do a um, coffee break earlier this year. Um, so yeah, I think Cushman's are really doing well to be quite forward thinking with being a big one of the big uh, consultancies and that's definitely what's helped me to stay where I am and I've just put here some uh, some of the things that we are either we've done at the firm or we are implementing now that have been highlighted as kind of uh, things that need to be challenged and um, brought forward within the company so one thing which is quite topical with this talk, for example, is that we have got training for spe female speakers so that um, females feel more comfortable in going and being panellists. And we now have a database of list of women who want to go and do talks um, and things like that. And we also have got um recently new miscarriage and menopause policies to make sure that we're covering um accommodating for colleagues that need to have a lifestyle change or need to know that they've got a company behind them who will support them so yeah i think i've ended up in a good place um but I didn't think on the face of it it would be that it was would be like that so um my tips are definitely to listen listen and listen and that's all thanks sarah thanks elena um so uh, really refreshing to <clears throat> to hear someone talking about retail um in a good yes. light at the moment um so that's great. And also um, some really topical issues there on that last slide uh, to do with um, things within those gender roles. So that's also great to hear. Um, so that nicely brings us up to just before 10 to 7. Um, we said we would allow 10 minutes for Q&A while we've got everyone in the same room. So if anyone wants to start us off with questions, that can be to any of our panel members, please.
really hard to stay silent for so long, but should we give it a minute? And then uh, I'm sure Tony Cheetah's probably got a burning question in there. Can I can I shout across the room and ask Georgia to say something about being involved in the Women in Property contest? Um, yeah, God, that was uh, that was a really beneficial experience. Not only does it give you a platform and it introduces you to people um, that are going to help you throughout your career, but it it teaches you kind of it was first my first bit of experience kind of presenting in a remotely pressured environment which uh was really helpful um when it came to interviews for placement years and for graduate schemes um but it also kind of going back to what 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 other people have said on this talk gave you a chance to kind of stand back from your individual discipline and look at um, property in the built environment more holistically uh, and give you an appreciation for um, the other roles within the built environment because they, they were the people that you're up against the people that you've um, you uh, you know came part of your network some of them became good friends um, and they were QSs, uh, building surveyors, architects, um, all different disciplines which I think was it was really valuable um, to get an insight into kind of the way they think and, and their disciplines. Uh, so yeah, re really rewarding process. Um, it, a little bit stressful at the time, um, but you know, really enjoyed it and met some great people through it. Thank you, Georgia. So um, I've just noted in the chat that Francesca would like to ask a question. Francesca? Um, yeah, it's either Georgia, Emma or Eleanor. Um, as sort of a upcoming young um, female professional going into the industry, what would be your one piece of advice for someone like myself as a female heading into sort of a male dominated industry? Um, I, I can kick off and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll answer one each perhaps. Um, <laughs> My uh, bit of advice would be just back yourself and hold your own. Um, it can feel like you perhaps don't know as much as the boys or you're not in their little club, but mm. that's complete nonsense. And uh, you're in that room because you deserve to be. So just back yourself um, and, you know, trust, trust in your own knowledge and, you know, don't take any nonsense. Can I follow that? Yeah, crack on. That's absolutely excellent advice. Um, and uh, yeah, I would take it a step further and say that um, it's a matter of trusting yourself. Don't feel like you have to change who you are to fit in. There is a tendency when you work with all guys to feel like you need to be one of the lads. Uh, otherwise, they don't respect you. But it's not the case, you know. It, more and more I would say that people in property just respect each other for their their different experiences and their different outlooks and whether it's because you're a female surveyor or whether it's from your background or whether it's your experiences what you bring to the table is always beneficial because it's always going to be different to everybody else's so don't feel like you have to mold who you are to fit their shape or the other way around shape who you are to fit their mold however you want to word it <laughs> But um, yeah, that's what that's my main piece of advice on that, I think. Yeah, I would just say if they're going to throw a load of jipes at you, just take it. Just take it and then show them what work you've got. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just um, looking over to the chat there. We've had a question come in to say, um, how conducive is the property market for graduates who want to be self-employed? And how long should that take after university? Oh, that's a tough one. So yeah. obviously with RICS, the idea being that as soon as you're an Emrics, you theoretically can work for yourself because, you know, the whole point of it is that you can stand alone and you represent them. Um, I work for myself. But as a consultant outside of property these days, so in a coaching, coaching capacity, my, my advice is to get stuck in and involved with companies and all that there is out there to offer uh, first and for a while until you get to the point where 
you feel like you've absorbed things around you because you know as the ladies were saying earlier a lot of your knowledge won't come from your studies it will come from being in the office surrounded by different people doing different uh, aspects of property it's amazing how much you get just by paying attention listening in so i would be a little bit wary of jumping in on your own to begin with because you can learn so much from other people great advice thank you Okay, if that's all the questions, it might be a good idea now to go to our breakout rooms where we can continue the chat. So Luke and um, Bennett is going to put you into those breakout rooms. Yeah, can I just explain how it's going to work? So um, uh, in usual Zoom form, you'll, you'll get a window pop up that invites <laughs> you to go into uh, a room and the rooms have been named with the names of the three speakers. So Emma, Eleanor and Georgia each have a room. Um, Emma, Eleanor and Georgia, please could you go into the room that has your particular name on it? Otherwise the system will completely fall apart. So if, if you accept to go into those rooms uh, and then other people can choose who they'd like to go and visit and listen in to conversations that are taking place in that room, uh, and you can, if you wish, leave that room, come back to the main space and then choose a different room to go into. Um, everybody can do that except for Georgia, Emma and Eleanor, because we need you to stay in your rooms, please. Otherwise, it will become chaotic. Um, so I'm going to press the button now. Luke, Luke, yeah. Luke be before you do that, could I just say something? Because yeah. I'm, I'm known for being a complete gobshite and talking too much. So I really didn't want to say anything before anybody else had the opportunity to speak. But I, I have to go in a minute. So I do apologise but because I'm on dad taxi duty and I kept quiet for a bit too long. <laughs> before we move into the breakdown, rooms, can I just ask the panellists, first of all, say thank you very much. And I do hope to be able to catch up with you another time. But I do have a question. If that's all right. So, Luke, I'm really sorry for this. Uh, but I would just like to know from each of our policy. I mean, obviously, we've got um, several tutors here now, you know, as in, as in, you know, and Luke and I have been around since I think it's 1854. We started this as our second careers. It seems a long time ago. It's 14 years, isn't it? And so we've seen a lot of change. But I've, I've, I've had the luxury of working in practice for 15 years where I've had a pretty decent mixed in terms of gender split and what have you so i'm used to working in teams that are kind of 50 50 male uh, female i'm used to working in a, in a diverse which is not the norm but i would like to know from the panelists if you could like feedback to us so obviously the reason why i said that we've now been here for i mean sarah's been here a lot more lot fewer years than us but it's still quite a lot now, so it's, ten, it's scary, isn't it so obviously time has moved on we've been in the university um, I would like to know, and obviously we all engage in professional practice in extracurricular activities and what have you. Could you give us any tips for that? So as tutors who are trying our best for the students to prepare them for, as well as we can for, for, their, for their careers, what I really want to know is, you know, if, if what would you tell us and do tell us, what should we be doing and prioritising in terms of making sure that we stay up to date and to make sure that we are able to help our students to the best of our ability going forward. So I know that we just look through a certain lens. That's a long waffle for me, but do you get the idea? Thank you. Just any hints or tips would be brilliant before I have to depart. And I do apologize. Thanks, Tony. So, so are you asking how the industry is changing our experience and then what we would like you to do with your students yeah, going forward. What, what do we need to do? Right. Okay. So it's, um, it's an interesting one because I was listening to everybody talk. And uh, so when I started, it was 13% women. It's now 17% women. And there's all this talk about, you know, 50%, 50%, which is excellent. But what I'm hearing then is actually it's only a handful of companies and it's the elite companies that people are aiming to work for in their big grad schemes that have this. So um, when I was at Candle Life, there, were, there was like a, a female fund manager and then a female asset manager started and she was brilliant. And when I went to join the Crown Estate, it was almost entirely women on the, on the regional team. And I was like, oh, my God, all 13 percent are there. I cannot wait to go and join them. And we had a female director and everything. I was very excited about it. And I think what 
would be useful is to tell students that are up and coming that they don't have to just focus on these big companies that have got all the glitzy DNI and everything going forward it's going to be great and they look after you because it's the little companies and the nitty gritty companies that anybody forward thinking and with a passion needs to get into and start making the changes because you know we hear about the big guys the Cushmans and JLLs and all sorts of things but you know that's still only 17 percent of us there's a lot more so where are they and uh, so I think it's like promoting this idea of you know there are other avenues outside of like the main grad schemes I would just follow on from that, Emma, saying that I think you get a much more rounded experience by not being in that as a graduate and by being somewhere smaller and with your colleagues around you rather than in two offices across the city where actually I have still never been to our other Cushman office. That's a whole half of our company who I've never interacted with, which is a bit scary. <laughs> I think as well uh, for, for you guys, I mean, I know you, you do this anyway, and I was a, a beneficiary of it, but I think as higher education institutes really championing women students from from ethnic minorities we know that this industry has a uh, an issue with with being a little bit of a closed shop at times so if we can break that cycle earlier on and you know we're we're often scratching our heads from a dni perspective how do we how do we get into schools how do we you know put this career in front of people who are choosing their a levels i think you know perhaps the, the corporate world and the, the higher education world needs to, to team up on, on those sorts of initiatives and, you know, go and say, right, this is, this is a career that you have, I guarantee you've never heard of. And this is Tony Cheatham and he's going to tell you how you can become a chartered surveyor because it's all well and good but me going into school and talking about what I do. But I think until people can see a tangible route in, it's, it's still it's still a, a you know it's quite idealistic so perhaps I think that that is a good next step. I think that's absolutely right because I can say hand on heart I swear to you that I did not know property was a thing at all it never occurred to me till I was sitting on that reception desk in the city of London and I looked around and I was like my god what is this this is exciting I had no idea and I come from like a uh school in South East London was well, not even like edge of Kent like it just wasn't a thing it wasn't a thing and I, I think that's it's it's going right back so that kids don't feel like their options are like where I come from you're a teacher if you're a clever or you're a hairdresser or a beautician if you weren't and those were your options and I fucked up being a teacher right so <laughs> it's um it's it's yeah I think that's absolutely right what George is saying that's thank really you. helpful thank you thank you I'm just going to take this opportunity now um, to thank all the speakers because I am going to have to, to back out as I think um, you were potentially aware of. Um, it's been fantastic to, to see you all um, and I will hand over to Luke to manage the breakout rooms. <laughs>